A lot of YouTube creators start a YouTube channel without thinking much about it. But there is a way to grow much faster when you're doing a little bit of preparation. For some time now, I am preparing to reboot my retro video game channel. So I'm going to share how I approach this. And the first thing I'm going to do is to watch a lot of videos about retro video games to get a little bit feeling for what people are interested in and what they are clicking on. So I'm also going to analyze what thumbnails that people are clicking on. By watching a lot of videos, and I do that on a new profile on YouTube, this gives me an idea of what kind of videos that I am getting suggested by YouTube when I watch a lot of videos around this topic. Because then those videos are showing up on my YouTube home screen. And when I see these thumbnails, I'm thinking to myself, Okay, this is an interesting video, but why do I want to click on this video? For example, I see here Super Mario. I want to start a channel about Sega games because that is what my interest is in. But in this case, what applies to Super Mario also applies to Sonic in this case. So what triggers me in this case about this thumbnail, for example? Well, it's the Super Mario logo that it is pixelated. And what I noticed here is that it is weird because Super Mario Bros on the Intellivision, that is something unusual, something weird, something that people probably want to know. And I want to know that. But to be honest, I don't think that this is the best thumbnail in the world. Don't get me wrong. But there is something that triggers me. And the reason why this is important to know because then I can apply this to my own thumbnails on my own channel. And then over here, for example, I have a thumbnail with the Genesis logo and Sega. Okay, that triggers me. So I'm searching for the objects in thumbnails that really trigger me to click on that. And I'm making a list of visual objects in thumbnails that trigger me to click on that thumbnail. And for this thumbnail, it is the Switch logo. It is the game here. Uh, it's the face of the creator. I personally would have approached this thumbnail a little bit differently because now here there are two times the Switch logo here and over here, but also the game is twice in the thumbnail. It doesn't add anything. So I would simplify the thumbnail more in this case. But here I have a toy room tour. <clears throat> that is interesting because I'm a game collector. So I'm really interested in game room tours, for example. And this screams game room tour. I, I want to watch that video. So I'm going to click on that video to get a little bit of a feeling of what is happening in this video. Okay, it's about toy collecting. It is not something that I'm interested in. I'm more interested in game collecting, but what applies to toy collecting probably applies to retro video gaming as well, because I'd like to see the weird artifacts or the weird collector's items that others have because I would like to own them myself. Regretfully, I, I don't have a gaming room, um, but how can I apply the same strategy to my own YouTube channel? I have my game games in boxes and maybe I can lay my games out on a table, for example. And when I look at this video, I see 14,000 views uploaded three days ago. 60,000 subscribers. Okay, so the channel isn't that big and he already can get 14,000 views on the video in only three days. Let's take a look at how big this channel is, how many videos are on there. Oh, 400 videos, that is a lot. Okay, okay, okay. What are his normal video views? Okay, 50,000, 40,000, 21,000, 18,000. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's not super. I'm hunting for videos with a lot of views of small channels with not a lot of videos on them because that tells me that if I start a new channel that I can get probably the same amount of views because I at least I know that the interest of the audience is there. And if a channel has only 10 videos, 10,000 subscribers and 100,000 views on their last video, for example, that's really good. And here's a thumbnail that I really like. And the funny thing is I'm a little bit of a programmer myself. So I've watched a couple of programming videos and I've watched also a couple of videos on retro video gaming. So what YouTube does is make a combination of those two interests 
and that is this video. So uh, for me, this video idea is really good, but I also like the quality of the thumbnail. I like the simplicity of this thumbnail. There are only two elements in this thumbnail and that is here, the Game Boy and over here, the programming language. Let's take a look at this video a little this bit. Okay, nine days ago, 50,000 subscribers. So the channel isn't that big. Ooh, nice, 30 videos and 50,000 subscribers. That's really good. What kind of views does he get? Okay, 42,000, that's really good. Only nine days ago, that's really good. 7,000, 400,000, 18,000, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000. Yeah, you stumbled upon something that a lot of people have interest for. 250,000. Regretfully, I, I can't apply that to my own YouTube channel because I don't have a lot of experience with, uh, with programming retro video games, uh, regretfully. Nevertheless, I really like his thumbnails. So what I do is I make screenshots of those thumbnails. I'm making a screenshot of this thumbnail this thumbnail. I also really like this thumbnail here because uh, again, it's really visual. Uh, it's about the NES. Uh, you can see that it is about video games because this is Mega Man and his titles are really short and punchy. Okay, but what I could do, for example, to apply this to my own new channel is to take one of my video game consoles apart and explain what is in it or explain a little bit about how games were made back then, for example. I have enough knowledge and experience about that. And I also really like this thumbnail here because it explains by showing the gamepad that it is about the NES. So how can I make it clear that it is about the NES or in my case, the Genesis or the Master System or the Game Gear is by showing a gamepad for that system, for example. And notice that these objects are always a little bit skewed or crooked, for example. It's, it's never straight. This image isn't straight. This one isn't straight. This isn't also straight. Also isn't straight. This is crooked. This is crooked. So that works really well. And I'm not looking to copy the video idea or the thumbnail exactly. I just want to have some inspiration for what works on my channel in the future or could work on my channel in the future. And by now I've gathered a pretty extensive collection of thumbnails that I really like and thumbnail ideas that I can use on my own channel. And this is a document that I made for the research of this channel. And by the way, everything that is in this document is also in my viral strategy video training. So uh, if you're interested, check that out. The link is in the description. Uh, and, and I've made that <laughs> into a really easy step-by-step -step questionnaire. Don't worry if this is a little bit confusing because it's just me going over the topics and just writing stuff down to get it out of my head. The most important part of this document is about the triggers, the pain points, fears, and motivators of your audience. Some of the triggers that I found by researching this, uh, this channel is things rely heavily on nostalgia and going back in time. Uh, the time at Christmas, uh, the time at Christmas at the store, a worry-free time because you were a kid back then, you had all the time in the world. You look back at that time of which everything was better in your mind. You feel that it is better or was better back then. One of the triggers is weird stuff, uh, weird games, uh, unique games, games that were different, uh, also accessories that were weird. So one of the things that I did a couple of weeks ago, I picked up something really special and that is this piece of equipment. This is the Aura Interactor. It doesn't get weirder than this. And I bought this, by the way, complete uh, completely new, complete inbox. So I'm going to unbox it for a YouTube video because this was such a weird accessory. If I can make a proper thumbnail with this, it's a really good video idea. It's, it's a kind of a backpack, which does something with sound and vibration. So you can feel punches, for example, in a game, Re li literally feel pain in a game. So the weird stuff, um, things you missed out or couldn't buy back then because they were right out too expensive. I also saw some trends about famous persons in the connect in the collector's niche. I also see a trend when it comes to famous characters, for example, Shinobi, Alex Kidd, Sonic, of course. 
new takes on an old and beloved game. One of the most beloved games back then was Castlevania. Uh, there is a Symphony of the Night game on the Mega Drive instead of the PlayStation 2. Can I talk about those really popular games? Because if there is a really broad interest, because a lot of people played the Shinobi games, a lot of people played the Sonic games, then there is a big potential for a lot of views. One of the triggers, and I mentioned that already, was the Sega logo or Sega versus Nintendo, because back then there were the so-called console wars, wars, and still in the back of your mind, those console wars are still in the back of your mind. So you want something to see something competitive because that triggers that feeling of back then of nostalgia, Sega versus Nintendo. Some pain points that I wrote down are solutions to problems in games. Uh, if there is a difficult section in a game, for example, or a really counterintuitive solution to a problem, for example, that could be a really good idea to make a video about. Buying fake games, uh, that is a really big problem in the retro video gaming niche. Uh, I can make a video about that, how to recognize that. I already did, but I can think I can remake that video to make it even better. Console games that don't work anymore. For example, there is CD rot, but also for example, the zapper, the light gun that you had to point at your television, uh, that doesn't work anymore on a, on a modern television. Something that I really had to learn is that there are two types of content, entertainment content and search-based content. Search-based content is, for example, tutorials. And a video like this is a tutorial. You've probably searched this in YouTube search. It is not really entertainment content, so it doesn't really show up as a suggested video or a home video. But retro video games is more entertainment content and not search-based content because probably you're not going to search for the review of the Aura Interactor. So there is no way of, of selling that to you in that way. But when I sell this in a way that it is an exclusive and new and weird and it's rare, for example, and I can communicate that clearly in title and thumbnail, it's an entertainment video. For entertainment content, your titles, thumbnails and video ideas have to be really good. For search-based content, you only have to find a niche topic. Your thumbnail only has to be better than your direct competition on the topic. Whilst with a thumbnail for YouTube Home and Suggested, you have to compete with Mr. Beast. Video ideas, titles and thumbnails takes some experience to get right, but finding a niche topic is pretty easy and fast to learn as a beginner. But the reward for triggering YouTube Home and YouTube Suggested is much bigger because this is where the big views are. I also wrote down some topic ideas. For example, here I found a YouTube channel that had a lot of views with only a couple of videos because here what is there where are there 30 videos 40 videos or so on this channel but look at the amount of views that this channel gets 1 million views for example or here 800,000 views here 3 million views how fast can I touch grass in every Mario game? I can apply that to Sonic as well. So how fast can I touch grass in every single Sonic game? Five Genesis games that don't look like Genesis games, for example. Showing off my collection. This way I've gathered tons and tons of video ideas. So I am not starving for video ideas. And I've also written down some keywords for videos. So the YouTube algorithm has an easier time figuring out what a video is about. So it can find the right audience quicker. One of the advantages that I have is that I already started a YouTube channel in this niche and I have some data, some usable data to use to start a new channel. So what I did is I looked at my YouTube channel, looked at the statistics, but also looked at what topics of videos that work really well. For example, over here, 1600 views, 1000 views, 800 views, those are the videos that stand out. The Let's Plays, for example, do really bad. Also, the watch time for Let's Plays is really bad. But for example, a video here, the games that nobody talks about, yeah, you want to know that. So I can understand why these did better. Uh, the problem here <laughs> is the thumbnail. When I look at these thumbnails in retrospect, yeah, I wouldn't even click on my own thumbnails. So in hindsight, I can explain why these videos didn't do as good. Okay, they did better than the rest, but they didn't do that good. 
one of the things that I've learned in the meantime is, for example, here I have a video about the Retro Gamescon in Zwolle in 2019. When I want to sell this video, what is in it for the viewer? Okay, it's Retro Gamescon. Okay, yeah. But what if I sold it a different way? For example, amazing finds at the Retro Gamescon in Zwolle. While it technically is the same video, the way I sell it to viewers is different. One prioritizes the event, the other prioritizes the finds. The question is, what is a game collector more inclined to click on? And this is why defining pain points, fears and motivators are so incredibly important. Because a rare video game is a motivator for viewers to watch a video. But Retro Gamescon Zwolle isn't. And for a new channel you always have to experiment a little bit. But the chances of success uh, when you use those pain points, fears and motivators for a channel to grow quickly, it's much higher. What I also do is look at the audience retention graphs because that's one of the advantages of already having a YouTube channel that you can see the audience retention graphs. So the videos that I make now, I can cut out the parts that doesn't work, that don't work. For example, here I do an intro, but this video is about the Retro Gamescon and, and I do an intro that is not at the Retro Gamescon and only here I start going to the Retro Gamescon. So there are a lot of people are clicking away. What you can see over here is the part in which I am at the Retro Gamescon. And it makes sense that this is the most popular part of the video because that is what people came for. This is what I communicated in title and thumbnail. Later in the video, I show all the games that I picked up. And that is what this video is actually about, the amazing pickups. And for example, this video right here, there is an intro in which people click away. That's why we ditch intros nowadays. I should have started over here when I'm talking about games. And you can see that overall the line is pretty flat. So generally speaking, when people are in the video, they generally keep watching the video. Concluding that this is a format to keep, but ditch the intro next time. Another advantage in the space is, is that creators in the niche are really bad YouTubers. They don't analyze their YouTube videos, so they'll never look at audience retention graphs or try to find ways to improve their YouTube videos. And notice the traffic sources for this video. It is the Mega Drive games that nobody talks about. In other words, when I see this on YouTube Home, I want to click on that. Nobody is searching for that. And you can see this also here in the stats over here. Because it says browse features, in other words, YouTube Home. But when I click on suggested videos over here, this is episode three, but from which video do I get the most traffic? Well, it is part two of this video. In other words, if I want to grow a channel like this, it is really useful to make multiple part videos. Because once people see a video that they really like, they want to see more like that. And that is why they subscribe. And that is why they watch multiple of your videos. And because the title of the video is basically the same and the content of the video is basically the same, only, well, the topic is the same, but the content is different. This really helps videos to show up in the suggested section. I've sorted my videos by the most views and I can see here this video has 8,000 views. That is the most views on this channel. Uh, this is a search video because people search for how to spot fake Mega Drive cart cartridges. This video is from 2017 so it is long overdue to make a new video about that because it worked in the past so it probably will work in the future as well. This video worked because nobody has made a video on the topic. Don't think that I will repeat this because it is a really small audience. That means that probably everyone who has a Craig's Mega Drive, uh, Craig's EverDrive, probably has seen this video already. But if the topic of a video is really niche, then there are less people to click on that video. In other words, it has a less potential to get a lot of views on that video. So I would avoid making a video like this. This worked because uh, everything that a collector should know. Yeah, okay, it is interesting. Mega Drive games that nobody talks about, so I can explain why this worked. Because of the title, I'm totally done with collecting C-based console games. Again, it is a little bit weird, that's why it worked. This video is too broad, because I've tried to apply this to game cases, but I don't think that the audience it attracts is specifically a game audience, so I won't repeat that. 
This is also weird, that's why it worked. Recreate the NES sound with modern synthesizers. Does that really attract a retro video game audience? I don't think so, so I wouldn't do that again. Uh, this worked because it's a modern game. Again, not the target audience for this channel. How to manage a memory of Sega CD. It's, re it's a really small audience, so I, I wouldn't do that again. Master System games better than a Mega Drive. Yeah, this worked. Uh, I think the topic is good. The thumbnail sucks. <laughs> the Pro Action Replay for Sega Game Gear. Yeah, super rare. That's why it works. How to play import games, etc, etc, etc. So I can explain why things are working and not working. So I can prevent myself from making the same mistakes again. To start out, I would go after home and suggested videos simply because you can get the most views from those. But I would also upload some search based videos because as a small channel it can be really easy to get some views in the door. I would do this by using a technique that I discussed in this video right here. This is a video that I made in a completely different way. I noted down some talking points and improvised. Hopefully this comes across more natural than my other videos. Uh, I'm really curious what you think about that. Let me know in the comments.